welcome here today. And I'm going to <clears throat> keep this as brief as I can because there's a lot of people here and I really look forward to hearing from you all and seeing how we can use some focused time to, to share some reflections together. I'll just talk a little bit about, uh, about this, this meeting and about what I hope to learn from it. I'll try and give you a flavor of, of the, the assessment of transversal skills and STEM projects in a few minutes and maybe touch on some key things. <clears throat> and one of the aims of these webinars is to have conversations. So as, as board has outlined, we will have space for you to do that, uh, a format to, to have discussion going. And to see that with some ideas, I'll, I'll just go through a couple of slides here and, and talk about a couple of things for a minute. And I'm gonna talk around STEM education and, and key skills. Uh, from practice to policy. So the ATS STEM Assessment of Transversal Skills Project, the KA2 Policy Experimentations Project that was conducted over 36 months with uh, 13 partners across eight uh, partner countries. And just like to thank all our wonderful partners and all the combined efforts of everybody. Um, we, it was a policy experimentations project. So for people who are familiar with these types of projects, the idea is to innovate uh, in digital assessments and to see what uh, lessons we can learn, good and bad, and how we can scale best practices then in, in European education. And of course, it is a challenge because Europe is an incredibly diverse place. And the one thing that the European Union doesn't do is, is regulate education. It regulates many other things. Uh, many laws that we all have in common, but we don't. Education is intensely local and political. Um, and that really came through <clears throat> in our project. And I'll just show you a couple of slides. It's some wonderful work that colleagues uh, in, in Sweden, in, in Honig have done. And there are students here in the snows of Northern Europe uh, taking photographs into recycling bins, gathering data that way or there's, there's uh, children here in, in Cyprus who are designing their own schoolyard. Oops, my slide seems to be on um, auto queue. Uh, and I think uh, this kind of shows the diversity of the environments we have in, across Europe and all the things they're doing. And this is a snapshot of, of, of work we got students to do in our project through the, the mentors and the process. And what's nice about some of these projects that students worked on in this was they're about integrated STEM skills. They're bringing together skills from multiple disciplines. They're using them to address a problem. Often around, we try to map those to the UN sustainability goals. But what was very interesting as well was how students acted as change makers in their environment, because a lot of the problems we face from climate to wars to pandemics they seem so big and horrible that it's hard to even know where to start sometimes, how you as an individual can have agency. And in these examples, and we had other examples like an Irish schoolyard or students in Slovenia, soundproofing a, a gym, lots of things where students are impacting their own environment. In this case, in Cyprus, they wrote a letter to their school board to ask them for permission to make changes to their schoolyard. And this, ethos of students as change makers affecting change in their environment and showing them that they can have an impact and make a difference was hugely um, important and inspiring. Um, and I guess just to, to come back to that, that, this policy thing is how do we take what's best out of these very big projects and distill them? And we did try and do some work on this in this project. We did a lot of literature reviews at the start of the project in trying to come up with things like what are what does STEM policy look like across Europe? And there's not a lot of policies on integrated STEM in education in Europe that we found in, in this report we did. But we did find that a lot of what STEM is about is at least on paper, this is what it's supposed to be about, is increasing participation, enhancing diversity and, and uh, bringing more females into STEM, for example, is a very big thing at, at EU policy level, uh, but also many other underrepresented groups. And um, so this is a, a big thing, but also the big challenge we face is we can't regulate education. So how do we have these conversations with these type of things in mind? So we did some other reports. I'll just 
quickly, we, they're available on our website. Um, some of the conceptual underpinnings of our project involved the first establishment phase of the project involved a sequence of literature reviews. And I'd just like to thank all my colleagues in, in Dublin City University, the great research team here that did, did uh, all of these. And I'll talk through a couple of things in them. I'll just touch on maybe one or two of these reports. We developed a framework based around integrated STEM. And I'll come back to this in a minute. And the learning outcomes that you might meet or learning objectives or intentions as sometimes they're called in, in different uh, nomenclatures. And within that, we had four things. We had score, core, <laughs> score, core STEM competences, STEM learning design principles, key features of formative assessment tasks. So we wanted to build everything about formative assessment, about ways we can make learning visible to teachers and students, give students feedback in such a way that keeps uh, learning, keeps the student moving forward and really try to articulate what's happening in a learning scenario. And then key, key features of digital assessment tools and platforms and how we can harness ourselves. And when when to use tools and how to use them and when not to use them. And one of the, some of the beautiful examples I showed you as well is, is people working outdoors. And I think one of the things we learn is the balance between digital and non-digital forms. And we don't need to get too caught up in the digital. There's, there's many trade-offs to different um, ways of learning. And, and the outdoors is, is hugely important, connecting with our natural world. We did some definitions. We, we looked at the definitions of STEM. And there's, there's, there's many of these as, as one of the lenses we took was about STEM as an integrated concept that we tried to look at STEM where you draw on the disciplinary subjects and use, you bring those together to solve a problem. And there is always a tension here because if I'm a maths educator or a computer science person, I want my students to learn more about algorithms and recursion and programming or calculus or whatever. Um, I, I don't want them going off to do group work until they've mastered the basics. Um, so there's often a tension between these things. And the other thing that we, uh, it's, it's nice to be critical of your own project as well, because something we didn't consider is STEAM. We didn't put the A in here for, for some reasons. And that was, I think, a, a mistake in our project, but something that we redress and that shone true in other aspects later as, as, we, um, as we progress. Because one of the things we were doing with this framework was so we were trying to evolve it. It was a living document for the, for the partnership to, to build as we did. Even as we, we built the framework, we, put some ideas together and I'll show those in a second. But then when we gave it to the partnership and we started discuss, discussing it, we brought in the UN sustainability goals as, as anchors for, for the lessons and so on. So it was evolving all the time. We looked at seven characteristics of STEM education um, that we thought were, we analyzed, uh, we did a systematic literature review of 74, we, we distilled it down to 74 publications in, in schools about STEM. And we looked at, we found that the most common um, facets were core STEM competences, which I talked about, problem solving, design and approaches, disciplinary and interdisciplinary knowledge, engineering design and practices, appropriate use of technology, appropriate pedagogical practices, and this use of real world context that I alluded to before about giving students examples of where they can feel and live the impact of what they're doing and they know that they're what they're doing is is, is not just um some something for school uh we found eight core stem competences so there's a lot of uh talk in all of the discourses about education about competences and we have these wonderful eu frameworks about uh, digicomp and the citizen comp frameworks and all of these and uh, at one definition of a competence, competence itself can be seen as the ability of an individual to use and combine his or her knowledge, skills, and wider competences around the varied requirements posed by a particular context, a situation, or problem. So very much oriented towards the problem. Although this definition is circular because it includes the word competence in the definition. But we looked at problem solving, innovation, creativity, communication, critical thinking, metacognitive skills, collaboration, self-regulation, and disciplinary competences. And these were the, the core competences we found in STEM education. Um, so that was that report. So we, we, we came up with all these different things that we want to look at, and how are we gonna make sense of those? 
So I'm running out of time. We map them all to a framework and you can see we, we put them in here. And that's what the framework looks like in the whole. And we were able to reveal and unveil different parts of the framework. As I say, we worked with 3000 students, 300 teachers. And this is just the, the diversity of the subjects we used, the integrated subjects, because it was about STEM. But when we gave the framework to teachers, they brought in every kind of subject you could think of, you know, language, art, history, biology. It was really wonderful. Uh, and I'm going to stop there because I'm, I've gone over my time by uh, 30 seconds. And I'll just leave you with this quote here. The greatest impact on learning is the daily lived experiences of students in classrooms. And that is determined much more by how teachers teach, how teachers teach than what they teach. And I think this is nice. It kind of foregrounds the teacher and teaching. And that's some of the things of this project. We did lots of wonderful stuff, but it never would have happened without the, the, uh, the creativity, the dedication and the resilience of the wonderful teachers who, who, who are teaching our children. So. Thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing more about your, your projects and your work in this space and um, continuing the conversation. I'll hand back to Boris. Yeah, thank you, Eamon, for the presentation. I think it's important that we went through the projects uh, because we have also some uh, here, uh, many experts uh, who are not directly participate. But uh, of course, also for, thank you for welcoming words. And also, I would like to ask to be us. Hammerberg, uh, as I mentioned, head of board of education and vice vice major, uh, major in Hennig municipality in Sweden. Uh, I would like to ask you also you for your welcoming uh, words and maybe some other things about the project. So please. Thank you very much uh, and thank you, Iman. Um, Dear ATS STEM participants from all over Europe, uh, my name is, as, as you've heard, uh, Tobias Hammerberg, and I'm chairman of the Board of Education in Haning, and I'm extremely honored to be here with you today and um, that our municipality get this opportunity to, to learn from all of you. Uh, I think this is a day to broaden perspectives and exchange knowledge between people who have uh, dedicated uh, so much time to give students better possibilities when it comes to success in their studies and therefore a greater belief in, uh, in the future. Research in the field of education, I think, is absolutely vital for each one of the millions of, of students all over Europe. And thank you all for, for your efforts in making the lives of uh, the youth better. So today we uh, meet digitally, which is, I think, amazing. Imagine a conference like this in the 1980s, the same number of participants and, and uh, the same geographical representation. Uh, what, what would the cost have been in um, time, money, and, and environmental uh, footprints? It will, sorry, it would be so much more, more difficult to arrange and fund. Would we even need today to exchange ideas if, if we didn't have this technology? Well, it's uh, anyway very nice to be here among people who I think embrace these opportunities uh, that we have today. Uh, in the year of 1917, uh, William Cody died. Do you know who, who William Cody is? It's, uh, he's also known as Buffalo Bill. Um, and in a big survey back then, uh, he was recognized as the world's most famous person. It was also the year when my grandfather was born, actually. Uh, although I'm, I'm pretty sure that he never topped any list uh, over famous persons. Well, imagine walking into a factory back in 1917. It's loud and noisy, steam and dirt all over the place. And uh, of course, a very hazardous environment. Now, imagine taking Buffalo Bill to Tesla's factory in Fremont, California. I'm pretty sure that uh, he would be standing there with no clue about where he was at all. And now, finally, imagine Buffalo Bill entering a classroom in your neighborhood school, maybe, as it is today. Would we see the same reaction from him? Probably not. He would feel quite at home since very little has changed, but technology 
has undergone immense development during this time. I think that most societies' ideas of school and education is far too conservative for its own good. It's not just as this technological issue, but also a cultural issue that we have to overcome to, to move into the next phase of, of education. I uh, think what would what would a school look like if it was developed by Apple, Netflix, Amazon, or Spotify, maybe? Would they move 500 students and, and 50 teachers into a specific building every day? Which is, by the way, empty for around some 70% of the time. Would they be satisfied with feedback on a student's progress in, in a certain area first after two or maybe three weeks when, when there is a test, or would they go for real-time feedback so they could immediately learn about uh, this student's needs and, and set up an individual plan right away. In my opinion, school has to catch up with the rest of the world and, and get on with the digitiz digitization, robotization, and, and automatization so that the teachers get the tools to meet every student in every situation just uh, where they are in that specific moment. And I think this is what this work is very much about. Well, I'm no scholar like many of you, but there I think lies the future of education. Who will get to school 2.0 first and get that advantage? With that said, thank you all for listening to me and an extra thanks to our host, Lovinia, I really long to get back to Ljubljana soon because I think that's one of my absolute favorite cities. Uh, thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for interesting words and uh, interesting story, uh, which is important when we talk about STEM and authentic situations. And yeah, you're welcome to come to Ljubljana. I hope uh, you will be able or maybe in new projects, we will organize the meeting uh, or conference. So thank you again to both of you, uh, to Eamon and to Bias. Um, and now we move to the second part of our, uh, of our uh, webinar. Sorry, I will just quickly share my screen, sorry. Um, <clears throat> just to uh, say again about uh, the uh, agenda. So we will hear now about a very interesting project. I must confess, I don't know uh, about all of them, all of those, but we have definitely very interesting and enthusiastic experts with us here. So uh, the first one is Mark William uh, from Flanders, from Belgium, and uh, he will present uh, RM's uh, project. So I will just stop sharing. Okay, um, I will have to apologize first for my camera. I can't get it on. Uh, it's always a risk to install an update uh, just before a meeting. Um, but uh, I'm sure you can do without my face. I will um, share the screen now and just look for the right one. Share. So if everything is working right, you should see my presentation now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I just say that I will just put uh, in the chat a uh, Padlet, so you can also comment or uh, make so, or put some questions for later discussion. And yeah, Mark, now it's perfect. So you can start. Okay. So, uh, my name is Mark Wilms. I work for the Public Body of Education in Flanders, uh, GEO. Uh, and I was a product owner on a learning management system for several years, which was called IXO. And kind of due to COVID uh, and circumstances, the plug was pulled from the project, which was um, a, a big shame because our schools, it was just a moment when everything was happening for, for this project. The project it was built around uh, managing self-regulated learning uh, with teaching teams or with uh, as teachers uh, as a new approach to build a learning management system around uh, the, the self-regulated learning aspects. 
uh, after that, um, um, I started learning, uh, working on the uh, underlying concepts, which is the learning mix, which is also a part of uh, a European project now, which is called Installed. Uh, beside that, I also work on innovation uh, and innovation uh, design thing design thinking innovation culture uh, within geo in a project called uh, geo sandbox uh, i use this picture of uh, of students with a lot of question marks in their heads something that you uh, that ask a lot uh, of energy from teachers to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to get a good knowledge from what is happening in this classroom um, um and i will try to go yeah, okay. So, um, and that will come back uh, later, but, uh, you know, it, something happened. Um, uh, COVID happened, and um, this is a bit of a joke, but uh, it also has very good parts because it really showed us that self-regulated learning is, is really important. Um, uh, and not everything went well in that COVID period, and we can learn a lot from it. And so, uh, it is very interesting to see what is in the black box of uh, of our flight during during this COVID crisis, uh, and so um, some some a few things we can learn from it is that learners uh, uh, had and do not have sufficient uh, skills for self regulated learning. We cannot just say, okay, now manage your own learning. Here's everything in a digital format. Uh, just uh, do this. Teachers had no didactic focus on self-regulated learning, uh, and this was awakened during the crisis. Um, didactical alignment around uh, self-regulated learning in schools is poor. Uh, every teacher manages this on its own, but it's a good idea maybe to manage this as, uh, as a school or as a, as a teaching team uh, and to create a common language around how you would manage self-regulated learning uh, and then um, learning management systems are not built around the concept uh, of scaffolding self-regulated learning uh, so these are some uh, black box insights and then you can start and work from uh, good knowledge and that's what we also did uh, um, the framework of Z Zimmerman for example but I'm don't panic I'm not going to dive into this I will work with with uh, four things that are really um, a main, main parts of where self-regulated learning needs attention. Uh, where are the failures um, uh, that occur the most? And that's, uh, that's uh, task understanding uh, and students don't understand the task uh, enough. Um, the goals are vague or not clear. They use random strategies uh, um, they might use mind map mapping, for example, but is this the right strategy? They might want to associate uh, uh, things uh, that would be very good, of course, uh, but maybe they, uh, they, don't, they don't have this uh, uh, good set of strategies that is aligned to what they're doing. And, and that's uh, a trial and error, of course. And that's also a good part, but we can facilitate this by scaffolding. Um, uh, self-regulated learning and they have a difficult th that's a big one i believe that there's a lot of difficulties in in monitoring the learning process and i want to refer to the the picture i showed uh, in the beginning if you can monitor somehow what is going on in this classroom then these question marks and these question marks of these students have a language uh, uh, in this learning process that's going on in the classroom that would be really nice and there would be less of bananas there in the classroom to slip on. Um, so uh, design questions for, for this project installed in the learning mix as a underlying concept is how can we flip ownership uh, uh, of, in the, uh, of learning, uh, of the learning process to the learning, sorry for the typo. Uh, can we flip that ownership? Um, how can we create a common professional language around self-regulated learning and how can we align learning management systems and tools around basic uh, self-regulated learning features. Um, sorry, there was a, uh, not so much time to make this presentation. Um, so um, let's see how, how Vic manages uh, self-regulated learning in his uh, math class. Um, 
Vic uh, has his, has a physical board uh, that he uses as a monitor because his learning management system doesn't really support this kind of uh, monitoring. And so uh, he he puts all the learning activities uh, on, on the on, on the boards. Uh, the students also get them on a paper. Um, but um, the agreement with the students, the, the, the rule of play, as you want to say, the didactic rule of play that Fick uses is that he says to his students, I want to see every activity that you uh, that you've done. So I can monitor uh, what's going on. You can also uh, put up a hand where you're having trouble, so you don't have to uh, uh, keep your hand up all the time uh, when you're stuck and you can work with something else. And also you can see maybe uh, who's good in this learning activity, in, the, uh, in this particular, particular, particular learning activity. And, and that's the other rule, that's self-estimation. So Vic has three rules. Um, Self-estimation, checkoff, and tutoring, uh, and these rules are very well understood with his students, and he uses a, a set of icons to to regulate this in the classroom. And so, um, for example, Zoe, um, when or let us say Rob, the third student here, when he's stuck with the first learning activity, can see that Mo is self-estimated as a rocket. So he might know a thing or two about his learning activity as well. Uh, and he's, he could also use the peer tutoring, tutoring without uh, asking teacher uh, uh, at that moment. So this gives kind of tools for self and social regulation of learning in the classroom. And it's really simple. Uh, and so what we do is we call this a learning mix. Uh, it's fixed math mix. So we built a concept around this kind of scaffolding of self-regulated learning. So, okay, nice work Vic, but now Vic is working with several other teachers. Um, I will, yeah, with several other teachers, for example, math, language, and physics, uh, three teachers in the classroom, big classroom, more students together, and they use the same language and they use three boards. Uh, and so they have three sets of learning activities. And so what we're trying to do with the learning mix is, is uh, use this generic line of thinking and create a concept around it. So the learning mix exists of three main concepts. There's didactic rules of play. There's sets of learning activities, which are more relevant to the learning process than to the content. That is important. It is how you manage learning in that in that environment. And then, of course, there's learning activities where a good tip is uh, that they can be uh, they can be uh, digital, they can be physical. Uh, um, it's every learning activity because the learner must be able to monitor the, the learning activities. Uh, they can be synchronous. They can be asynchronous. So let's see now if we can put this concept. Uh, um, what we have these didactic rules of play from, from Vic. Uh, we have uh, three sets of learning activities and we have uh, different kinds of learning activities. For example, a reading task, uh, 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 a thinkering task, uh, whatever you like to put there um, as a task. Um, Arna is managing self-regulated learning in a project-based learning. So we want to use this learning mix uh, model for every kind of didactic context. Project-based learning is a different context. And so she has a different rule of play. For her, it's a key activity which unlocks the new uh, activities for learn in a new phase of the project. So the sets are here, orient, prepare, execute, which is very simple because it must fit a slide, but um, she has these three concepts and she's going to use a key activity. So we have a new rule of play here on the right. That's the key activity. And we have different sets, orient, prepare, execute. And we use this, uh, um, we use this uh, uh, set of language. What we are doing now with this project is uh, we are building the framework uh, around it. We are uh, um, uh, creating materials for professionalization in schools to help teams to uh, get a, that common language uh, um, um, and use it in the classroom. Um, I don't know what my time is, so give me an indication. I think I need three more minutes. 
Is that okay? Okay. Um, so the, the frameworks, we have some pilots uh, running um, because we want to know uh, what it takes to implement this in schools and how we can facilitate that uh, and build a good training also that aligns with these needs. Uh, and this is really, this is the output where I'm working on the most. It's uh, uh, as adult product handles. So these rules of place, we'd like to make product handles uh, for that for, um, for learning management systems. So if we, uh, if we communicate to our schools, which are uh, uh, um, thousands of schools, uh, if we communicate to our schools, we want to use these product handles and say, this learning management system can do self-regulation. This management system can do tutoring, peer tutoring, uh, peer evaluation, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, this common language uh, also um, uh, encourages uh, learning management systems to, uh, to, um, to, to, to um, build these, uh, these features. And that's another part of the output is user stories for EdTech. Um, and then we have some, um, some uh, guiding for policymakers. Um, we work on this project with uh, VUB, uh, University of Brussels, Let Research Institute, uh, H2 Learning, and uh, Tallinn University. Um, some, um, some, of course, the project isn't finished yet. Isn't, isn't finished yet. So uh, a, a sneak peek. Uh, from my point of view, is that um, what we need is more interoperability, uh, interoperability uh, between the content of learning and learning management systems. Uh, and I think uh, I heard what uh, in the previous uh, speaker said, uh, what would Netflix, for example, do uh, uh, looking at education? Uh, I like to see uh, more uh, of this kind of approach where you could um, stream learning activities, slice educational content in learning activities that can be uh, enriched in a school context with rules of play uh, that can be edited edited to, to the context, uh, which could be a more rural or more uh, um, um, a city context um, uh, or more cultural background context. Uh, so editing this content content would be nice for teachers to be able to. Um, we would like to see that streaming model where teachers can use materials from different um, from different publishers, for example, and themselves, and mix them in learning mixes. Um, so that is a a brief uh, a brief overview of the learning mix concept. Um, there's a lot of things I could tell and show, but I think it was important to kind of understand what the learning mix concept is about and what the, the goal is of the concept. And it, it is basically to create a common language. So the impact in a school is bigger because we know that it's, it's, it's more, uh, there's, a, there's a big impact if, if schools uh, uh, and, and professionals in the school are aligned to a didactic approach in the school. Uh, and they speak common language and and so that that is also a part where we see that EdTech is now more scattering uh, or uh, um, creating uh, difficulties in, in integrating different sources uh, and really it should be a movement towards integrating it in a didactical uh, uh, in didactical concepts thank you yeah, thank you very much, Mark. I think very uh, interesting. Uh, really, thank you that you really focus on what is really, we say, the heart, <laughs> and I would say the heart of the project. Mm -hmm. So really how uh, didactic change, uh, how we can really integrate the self-regulated learning, which is important. Uh, uh, and of course, this teamwork of teachers and these three rules. So I think uh, really interesting. Uh, um, uh, we will not have questions now because, as I said, uh, we will after the presentation we will uh, put you in four rooms, and in in the first room will be uh, Mark. Uh, so we can also ask them, ask him, sorry, uh, uh, questions for later. I also mentioned 
Uh, sorry, I will just quick uh, share my screen. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, uh, in Padlet, you can see you have here a Padlet. Uh, you can uh, comment, just click on plus and make some comment question for Mark, or maybe if you have for Tobias from before about interesting story and also for for other uh, for other presenters today so uh, thank you again mark uh, and now we move to cyprus uh, dr gregory bakridzes i hope i pronounce okay uh, from professor from steam education uh, will also shortly present the heart of the steam project so please gregory We'll just stop okay, good morning to everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, this uh, this PowerPoint, of course, is many has many slides. About ninety slides. I send this a copy to to the organizers so it can be made available. I will try to skip many, of course, slides because we don't have enough time. But the, the idea behind this, of course, is that uh, uh, is based on, I like to always show this and uh, what Einstein said, that imagination is more important than knowledge. And really what we're trying to do when we talk about STEM as schools of the future, and when, when we say STEM, by the way, is really STEM uh, with the A standing for arts and E standing for entrepreneurship, because if we, we do develop methodologies and support for project-based learning, especially in future schools. And uh, we have, um, so based on what Einstein said, of course, imagination is important and you need to use imagination, but no matter how good imagination you have, if you try to imagine the schools of 20 years from today, it's almost impossible because you don't know what technologies will look like in 20 years. If 30 years ago, we, we mentioned technologies we use today as in our everyday life, um, it could have been taken as a, as a funny story. So um, what, the, uh, what technology will bring us in 20 years will, will determine the many things, of course. And uh, okay, let me move forward uh, and uh, show more or less what uh, our colleague uh, Tobias earlier uh, said the story about the the factory, but really he mentioned this also. Uh, what you see here is two pictures. So in order to try to understand the, how, what to do in the future, you have to study the past a little bit. So over the last 100 years, if you compare two classrooms, we don't see many changes. So we haven't changed much. It, besides that we have color picture, we have GDPR, not to, to be able to see faces of kids. We have some screens, of course, and some whiteboards other than that. We keep teaching in most uh, educational systems in the world in the same way. So, what we what we try to do, I've, I have of course some other pictures interesting. The air conditioned class of the 50s with open air, and of course the today's classrooms with air condition. Some mobility in the 60s, but today's mobility is uh, just tablets. We have seen schools where there are no kids with bags. We studied all the schools of the world that they are considered STEM schools, about 50 schools. We have seen schools without classrooms. We have seen schools demolishing walls to make open spaces. We have seen schools with uh, moving walls up and down by pressing one button. Uh, so we have seen many things and we have uh, collected information. We have uh, run uh, focus groups with experts, et cetera, et cetera. We ran a European survey asking why a mathematician or a biologist cannot work together to make a joint project-based learning activity for, for a group of students, right? The mathematician said, I don't know biology. And the biologist says, I don't know mathematics, so I cannot do it. So what we try to do in this team a project, we try to give some ready-made solutions and some instructions. So we find, of course, education 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. So we're trying to build this education 4.0. So we are co-creation and innovation is in the center, the flip classroom in full uh, in full operation. And of course, we stopped, we eliminated the, 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 the working of lesson plans. We don't call them lesson plans anymore. We call them learning and creativity plans. So this is what we built it. 
And this project more or less is, uh, has developed the guidelines for STEAM activity in schools, existing schools, what we can do in existing school structures. And if we're going to build a new school in the future, how it should look like. And I have some designs to show you, of course, of a school of the future, uh, how we imagine it, of course, because we have no budget limitations of what this school will cost. We used our full imagination but if uh, anyone was to build such a school, it, it would cost a lot to, with today's, of course, um, uh, expenses, but uh, you can make a, small, a smaller scale, of course. So new organization structures and, and tools for teachers, training course for teachers, ready-made learning and creativity plans they can use, um, uh, and uh, ready-made uh, project-based uh, learning descriptions with tools, et cetera. So, these are the main, the main outputs of this project, guidance and dynamic and adaptive STEM curricula. We believe that the knowledge in the future will be easily accessible through digital learning. So we have another project, Bring Your Own Device, where we develop uh, a, a, a methodology and a platform where every teacher will be able to convert his, his, his 45 minutes lecture into a video learning in three different speeds of 15, 30 and 45 minutes, have it sitting there and then use it in an appropriate way, have it ready for pandemic situations, have it ready for distance learning, have it ready for hybrid class uh, uh, activities because another project running right now is the STEAM goes hybrid, where we say, okay, we need to do a project and we are not all in the classroom. How can we do a project-based project learning activity where some teachers are away from each other. Some students are in the school, some students are at home. So we need to provide a solution for this as well. So we also have guidelines for STEAM activities in schools for two age groups and guidelines for STEAM organization structure. So to save time, I will just open the website and show you where to find things in the website. So this is the website of the project. These guidelines I just mentioned can be downloaded from here. In a, in a digital book with uh, handbooks for learning creativity plans, the guidelines for STEAM activities, including evaluation rubrics for uh, project-based learning, including um, uh, how two teachers can work together to support a, a group of five students working a project with 18 steps, which is a model we develop, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But what you find here is the STEAM observatory. In the STEAM observatory, you can find, uh, of course, uh, learning and creativity plans templates in five different languages. You can find, let me find the button, I'm going back one moment, because I have this screens opening. Yeah, then you can find different windows in the, in the observatory, but the learning and creativity plans are the tools we develop for teachers with ready-made examples of learning and creativity plans uh, in a special template that we develop for learning and creativity plan. I repeat that learning and creativity plan is the old lesson plan. Worksheets, presentations, PowerPoint, material, et cetera. So these are different projects where they involve at least two teachers. And of course they involve at least two subjects like mathematics and biology, as I said, economics and, and uh, and chemistry, whatever, whatever, whatever. And of course, some of these were piloted in, in schools in the project, and we have done some uh, feedback evaluation, etc. So what else is here in this website? Uh, you can find, of course, policy recommendations we develop and we send to all ministries of education, and they, we publish them in eight different languages. The European STEAM Conference, which is, of course, is an annual event, then the next one will end of June in Thessaloniki. Some interesting content. The European training course, uh, where we, based on uh, on uh, um, uh, competence framework that, that we worked on, uh, we uh, developed the modules that teachers need in order to, to be able to uh, support STEAM activities. So these are also recorded, uh, of course, without editing videos, and you can uh, go through them, and the teacher can go through them. And of course, we, we developed the journal of STEAM creations for and by 
club uh, school students. So we give the opportunities to students to publish their project work and have see their name published. And uh, let me go. So this is what you find in the in the in, in the website. And of course, in the observatory, there are more things, more links. There are links to all these schools which we started in the world. But so let me go back to see how much time. I don't know. These are the publications, but you will find and download from the website. This is the 18 steps uh, uh, cooperation between uh, teachers. This is the evaluation rubric for work-based training, the work-based uh, project-based work. Sorry, the training course with the modules. Uh, all right, let me skip. These are the European uh, survey we did and what the teachers here. And this is the design of the school we made, where, which of course we base it on, on the, uh, on the uh, BIS uh, walls, for the, using the hexagons, connecting. Of course, this is a huge build because every, every side is 50 meters. Uh, and of course it's self-sustaining in, in uh, in energy because they are full voltaics. Let me show you quickly more pictures of this. It's a three floor, each floor is minimum six meters. Now we say it should be 10 meters high, the ceilings, because you may have drones uh, uh, playing inside these buildings. You can have green everywhere. The laboratory is in the, in the, in the basement, including everything we know about technologies today, virtual reality labs, et cetera, et cetera. Specs for the first floor, et cetera. Specs for the second, et cetera. Some cuts, but let me show you more pictures and especially highlight. Even for sports, you know, I don't know if we have time, but there is a video here about a few seconds showing the new type of sports designs, sports centers. So you have, um, you have one room and then we let lights in the floor, you change it to basketball, you change it to volleyball, etc. Uh, here, of course, if I may go back to this, uh, this, this part, this hexagon is a sports center where it is open to the school on this side during the day and then it closes in the afternoon and then it opens to the community in the afternoon. So the community can use the sports center, pay, of course, a fee and sustain uh, the needs for the school. Um, so I'm skipping the videos. So this is in the basement, uh, the ground floor pictures. These are the learning learning stations. What are the learning stations? We have learning centers. When the students work on project, they may realize with the support of the teachers, of course, always, uh, that they miss some knowledge. So the teacher may say, okay, you guys go to the learning stations, watch a video about, let's say they don't know Pythagoras theorem. Learn, uh, watch a video of 15 minutes about Pythagoras theorem and come back. Or maybe they knew Pythagoras theorem from the previous year and they don't remember it. So they need to recall knowledge. So they can go to these learning stations. And we built this bring your own device project where we develop these videos. Or they can go in groups in a learning room together with their teachers and, and Re restore the knowledge they need or they need for the project. So all these are open spaces and within we have a train, by the way, uh, a magnetic train moving around this building, which is 600 meters uh, circular within the hexagons, even wagons with uh, fully sealed for noiseless, but it will be a noiseless train anyway, but the students can sit and work on this train. It uh, would be moving three kilometers per hour. So uh, these are the learning rooms everywhere and learning stations, other pictures. And this, this is a new technology that we can have the students come to school every day and see a different color of the school. It's possible to change the colors every day. Why not? If you can do it, it would be good for the students and the environment. We even propose for any future curriculum to have the international sign language for deaf people learned by everyone. Why this is important? It is important because uh, and we have another project developing only this, an amateur on the internet, because the international sign language is there, but nobody is using it. Uh, and we know that the international, the sign language of every country is different. So people from different countries cannot communicate if they use sign language, but 
international language is, op is common to all and it can be used also in case of emergencies. And we have real stories about it. I have another video, maybe I'll show you this video. skip. So um, we say here three steps on how to go from um, current schools to, to STEAM activities. For those who want to convert a school into STEAM activities, we say secure digital learning through learning videos and teachers how to cooperate and how to develop these learning videos uh, and of course create open spaces. This is what one can do now. I know in some countries they demolish uh, walls and to make more open spaces. Building more blocks, let me just mention for a few more minutes what is running at the moment, which is building the blocks around this future school. Steam goes hybrid, which I already mentioned. How, what do you do uh, when you want to do projects in a hybrid way? Uh, we have um, uh, two projects on empowering schools transition readiness to distance hybrid. So this is about competence uh, framework for uh, teachers and empowering hybrid competences also for on life adaptable teaching. We believe that teachers should be adaptable to change. We cannot keep training teachers. So we should help them develop the competences so they can adapt by themselves. And we also believe that the change will be brought and imposed by the students. So we, we believe in the bottom up approach. This is they bring your own device learning I mentioned earlier for developing video lessons uh, for all the curriculum. They teach the future uh, with subjects uh, uh, having to do with uh, Green Deal and the climate, etc., which is very important. Excellence in math education through debate and diversity. This is promoting dialogue and debate uh, in the learning process. Uh, cooperative learning. The facility that is a project started recently and it will try to develop methodologies of how to teach artificial intelligence in secondary schools. And of course, the very fresh, which only starts in a few days, first of May, European STEM School Student Network, the, the, STEM, the STEM students, as we call it, uh, in order to support the European platform for STEM students who uh, will be communicating on this on a platform, presenting project work to each other. And we have a budget to support a, a European association. We will be the mentors. The students, the students, school students will be organized into an association of STEAM students because we believe that these are the students who are going to demand the change. The students, I know you mentioned earlier about self-regulation, of course, yes. But I think the students are developing their own self-regulation. We cannot teach them the self-regulation anymore. They think the students know technologies better than us and they develop this uh, faster than us. And there are people in the United States, especially that we work with, that they believe that if we don't change the methods we use in schools and we don't change the school environment, the student learning spaces that we use today, by 2050, they believe that most schools will have to close for the simple reason that the homeschooling will be developed so much and will be, become the right of students. So the students will say, why should I come to school five, six hours when I can learn everything by myself in two hours? So you just give me a test and to see if I can learn by myself. So this is part of the self-regulation. <laughs> if 90% of the students, let's say someday, they do homeschooling, because they refuse to go to school, what will you think will happen? Many schools will have to close. So, so I'm, I'm closing with this, and this is a new proposal that we, we, pro, we sent uh, recently, the STEME parents, because we consider that parents have to understand STEME because they can support the flipped classroom. They can make their kitchen a STEME laboratory, in other words. So we need teachers to, we need parents to understand STEME. Sorry for talking too fast.
uh, I'm done. Uh, thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Gregory, uh, uh, for your presentation. And uh, also this enthusiastic <laughs> uh, uh, future-oriented <laughs> activities. I think in all, of course, in all of our projects, we have, uh, we are really future-oriented, uh, uh, but you really present this uh, imp important that interdisciplinary cooperation is, is a must, and uh, then we can also uh, change many things in curriculum, uh, at school organization structure, uh, you show us architecture, so, and really, it's important as uh, in this uh, today policy makers webinar we bring all, also other uh, policy experimentation projects which was you know uh, uh, accepted by european uh, commission uh, or agency uh, in 1919 like uh, like ours atstem and of course also some others so i i think we you, you will have a lot of things to discuss in second group, uh, in second room with Gregory. So we go on now with Sameye uh, from Turkey and uh, from the Ministry of National Education. And uh, she will, or you will also uh, uh, present us shortly your very interesting project. So I will just stop share my screen. Thank you very much for it, for the floor, and thanks again for the invitation uh, to join the webinar to share our project. Let me just share my screen and introduce you about our um, STEAM project. Uh, our project uh, is entitled as Fostering STEAM Education and Schools, and we have an abbreviation for it is the EDUSIM STEAM. Uh, EDUSIM STEAM means the education for STEAM education, simulation environment, and finally, have the umbrella uh, STEAM uh, for the overall project. Our project has been uh, granted by the European Commission uh, Executive Agency in the support for policy reforming. It is one of the uh, forward-looking cooperation projects granted for uh, 2019. We have in total nine partners, but we will be, uh, we are in the process to involve one more partner. So we will be leading the project with 10 partners across Europe from different partners, uh, ministries, researchers, universities, companies, consultancy firms. So it includes different range of stakeholders who are enrolled in STEAM education. You could see the website as edusimsteam.epa.gov.com TR. The main objective of the project is to provide and to provide an innovative online platform of where teachers, students, schools start and test STEAM practices in an online setting. We also give great importance to support transnational cooperation and mutual learning uh, between European partners in terms of STEAM education. And as it is a policy reform project, it is very important for the policymakers to see the expected result and to collect evidence about um, innovative policies and the practices in STEAM education. So the project focuses on to establish an EU level action to promote a STEAM approach, which is evidence-based and supports the existing curriculum for teachers who are, as, who are actively using STEAM practices. The project has seven work packages and each work package has specific tasks and specific activities. Uh, we are now about um, the we are now launch. We have launched the work package four, and we are now working work package five as well. The both work packages are in uh, the same uh, in the same phase. Uh, first of all, uh, we are we have defined the project design. We have conducted a needs analysis. We have designed our strategy to develop STEAM practices across uh, EU partners, and then we have conducted. Uh, a very extensive teacher training and we have developed a STEAM education framework for teachers and we have conducted pilot trainings in Spain and in Turkey and now we have been revising our STEAM education framework, we have been revising our STEAM uh, education content based on the pilot training and then all the training materials will be available to all interested teachers, schools who are interested in STEAM and can get to um, can get access to the uh, content from our website as well. And then we have provided sample STEAM scenarios, which are to be implemented in an online platform, which supports simulation, which supports robotics and coding. And it is the innovative side of the uh, project. So it is implemented in the work package four. And based all on these four separate work packages, we are now providing a practical guide for policymakers who are interested in STEAM practices, who are interested to invest in STEAM education and 
see what kind of training models, what kind of curriculum materials are supported to STEAM education. These are will be these uh, points will be provided in the practical guide for the policymakers. Work with page six and um, seven is more about the monitoring, evaluation, dissemination, and then we will have a conference, final conference in Spain on STEAM education. It will be held at international scale. Once uh, all the details are confirmed, we will be happy to share to say send the invitation to the partners. Um, the main activities of this project uh, is to provide an online simulation and robotics education based on STEAM approach. To conduct this, we have, um, we have collected data from the schools, from the teachers uh, to see their needs on STEAM education. It has been conducted at EU level based on their needs. We have provided a, a learning platform, an online platform for teachers to develop their STEAM practices uh, and all the content and all the training platform has been developed based on a STEAM education uh, practice. And uh, the next step was to develop sample learning scenarios, which connects the work package two and work package four. So it is a kind of pedagogical guide for teachers to see how different disciplines, how multidisciplinary uh, practices could be applied. And now we are uh, launching and we are now developing the innovative online platform for STEAM education, where teachers can easily log in, they can easily develop algorithms, uh, practice robotics and simulation based on the STEAM learning scenarios, which is an output of the researchers and the STEAM practitioners. So it is very valuable. It will be a very valuable online platform um, developed as a part of a pedagogical work. And then we will provide recommendations and uh, very important suggestions for the policy makers. It will be the main uh, activity uh, activities that we will be leading in the project. There are different target groups in the project and each target group have specific tasks. For teachers, we focus on developing their competences, providing them an online training platform, uh, introduce them learning scenarios they, where they can practice different activities based on their competences. And the four teachers, we have been providing extensive capacity building activities and trying to build a learning community in Turkey, in Spain, and the other interested STEAM teachers across the other EU countries. As for the students, we focus on developing competences and providing a pedagogical platform, a safe platform for STEAM education. So they will be jointly working with their teachers to develop their practices. And as for the policymakers, it is very important to see how practice and the policy comes together. So we have been um, we have been closely tracking the findings of the needs analysis at the EU level. We have been developing the framework, updating the framework, uh, guiding the other stakeholders in terms of the STEAM education practices. So as policymakers, we focus on developing a model, an evidence-based model for STEAM education. As for the researchers, we have very valuable researchers, university and academic partners in the project. So uh, we really give importance to collect evidence for STEAM education. So scientific perspective on STEAM education really values the project. And we are very happy to see the partners who are enrolled in this webinar. And I am sure they will be sharing their perspective perspectives in the discussions next to be held. That is all from my side, and I hope uh, I will be able to share the basic principles, basic activities of the project. You could look for the further information on our project website. You can look for the uh, information, informative updates from our social media accounts. And if you have any more uh, critical issues about the project, you could just send me an email, and we will be happy to support you in this STEAM education uh, journey. I am very happy to share the details. And now, uh, uh, the floor is yours, Bert. Yeah, thank you very much for <laughs> your quick, uh, really introduction of, of your project. I think it's important that the, really this uh, uh, the Erasmus project, which really brings together uh, researchers, policymakers, and of course we test everything with teachers, uh, so we can really provide then this uh, recommendation for 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 all stakeholders. So thank you for your presentation. Um, in the chat, I also put the, um, the, the link uh, to a registration forum of our conference uh, because next Friday, 6th of May in Dublin, so face-to-face, -face. <laughs> no, no, no online. Uh, we will have a conference, <clears throat> sorry. We will have a conference and all of you are invited. So I hope you will have time um, to come to Dublin and to, to arrange so we can have also discussion 
there. Uh, again, I will just uh, I will just mention again the 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 Padlet which we have. Uh, so we thank you for those who already put some comments and questions. Uh, and maybe Mark and uh, Gregory and now Sumeye, if there will be some question, you can also uh, put some links there or some, some answer or other things. But of course, now we will go to our fourth uh, presentation, uh, another presentation from Cyprus. And again, uh, it's in the field of the STEAM. Um, so Nicoletta from University of Cyprus, uh, the partner of education, uh, if you can start your presentation. Thank you, Barut. Um, I'm sharing now my screen. And, okay. So, um, uh, I will present you today the STEMIT project, which aimed to introduce an interdisciplinary STEM uh, approach. Uh, I work as a researcher at the University of Cyprus and specifically the Research in Science and Technology Education uh, Group, and we are partners in this uh, project. Uh, before moving on, I would like to explain that the A in the STEMIT acronym, which is in parentheses, represents all uh, uh, in an effort to highlight uh, the importance of connecting uh, STEM uh, subjects to all other disciplines. So the consortium of this project consists of six partners from Belgium, Portugal, Croatia, Italy, and Cyprus, and the coordinator is the European Schoolnet. The general objective uh, of the project is to straighten the educational landscape by promoting innovative and cross-disciplinary approaches to STEM teaching. And to achieve this, we developed and tested a framework of reference for integrated STEM education. We train teachers by offering them a massive open online courses. We set up a European network of career advisors and we provided tools and guidelines for the promotion of uh, current and future STEM jobs. Uh, the project started in November 2019, and until today, the main tasks, the main activities have been completed. Uh, at, the, at the beginning of the project, we conducted in desk research to set the state of the art and to identify the needs and the opportunities for uh, STEM integration. So the outcomes of, uh, of our desk research helped us uh, later to prepare the goal creation workshops with the relevant stakeholders, which were uh, teachers from primary and secondary education, ministers of education, and, uh, and industry representatives. 11 focus teachers have collaborated uh, closely with the consortium for the development and testing of uh, STEAM lessons. And in the meantime, the material for the development of the MOOCs was generated. Um, all the feedback that was collected from the workshops with the teachers, ministers of education, industry representatives was incorporated in the first draft of the framework. And uh, now we're in the stage of processing uh, more data, more uh, input from, um, from teachers and all the other stakeholders uh, in order to finalize the framework. And in parallel, we, we, still, we still support uh, the activities of the STEAM Career Advice, Advisors Network. Now, although STEM education uh, should already denote a considerable degree of interdisciplinarity of STEM subjects, uh, integrated STEM education in the STEAM project has been conceptualized as an effort to highlight the need to combine different STEM disciplines and non-STEM disciplines in order to address uh, real world uh, problems. A weakness of many efforts for promoting integrated STEM education so far has been uh, that they have failed to outline and underline the necessary adaptations for innovation to be readily taken up in pedagogical design and instruction in, in a real classroom. Although intentions of all engaged stakeholders may have favored uh, integrated STEM education uh, as a desirable objective, the current school practice and uh, institutional reform 
is still lacking behind when it comes to its interdisciplinarity and integration in STEM education. And stakeholder interaction and a comprehensive stakeholder approach is urgently needed if we want to promote integrated STEM education and involve all the um, relevant stakeholders. So the STEMIT uh, integrated framework aims to facilitate, to support and advance the introduction of STEAM integrated teaching and learning to the primary and secondary education European classrooms. And to do so, uh, we are going to create a set of pathways uh, addressing its main stakeholders, uh, which are, again, the teachers, the head of schools, the policymakers, and educational researchers. So these pathways will actually compose by blocks of information that have been collected and validated throughout the, the project and its activities. And depending on the stakeholder and considering his, her individual needs and interests, the pathways will suggest the different emphasis that could uh, be given to each step. From a practical perspective, the framework uh, provides teachers and heads of schools with guidance on how they can bring STEAM integration into their daily practice. Uh, it provides examples of topics that facilitate uh, STEAM integration, lesson plans that have been created and tested by the teachers that uh, collaborated with uh, the consortium, tips on what works well uh, and what is not, and guidance on how to integrate STEM careers to STEAM integrated uh, lessons, assessment methodologies and conditions of success. Uh, policymakers are offered an insight on the role of STEAM integration and the practices observed on international level, the impact of this approach on teachers and students, and the challenges uh, related to its implementation within the current school organization norms and existing curricula. Now, the pilot implementations in the STEAM project involved, uh, as I said before, 11 uh, teachers who form uh, local teams uh, at school level. They design a STEAMIT learning scenario with their teams and carried out implementations in their classroom. And due to the pandemic, the implementations uh, varied from in-class, online, and hybrid. Um, all the STEAMIT learning scenarios, however, combine at least two STEM subjects and one or more non-STEM subjects. They introduce students to real life questions, foster the acquisition of 21st century skills, incorporated pedagogical approaches and methodologies such as um, problem-based learning, project-based learning, inquiry learning, design-based learning, etc. And every STEMIT learning scenario made a connection of the topic with, re uh, with relevant STEAM careers. Now, the teachers who carried out the implementations reported that they felt more competent during the implementation rather than uh, during pedagogical uh, design, explaining that their main challenge at the beginning was to find the ideas that fit perfectly to the curriculum and figure out what the exact content of each lesson uh, should be. They found very useful the support they received during the Go Creation workshops and also they appreciated the support from other colleagues and the principal of the school. Although it was quite a challenge to collaborate uh, for the design and implementation of the learning scenario, teachers admitted that they had positive feelings and felt very productive when collaborating for this task. And despite the challenges and difficulties they faced, especially uh, due to the pandemic, at the end of the day, they were very satisfied with the result. And uh, when they were asked if it was easy to adopt the integrated STEM education approach, the main finding that came out was that primary education was by nature more probable to welcome this new perspective uh, than uh, secondary education. Teachers seem to admit that the design of an integrated STEM learning scenario should be a sophisticated product made with the involvement of uh, several stakeholders. 
And last but not least, uh, teachers reported that their students uh, were excited, they were active, and they enjoyed uh, the implementation of the STEMIT uh, learning scenario. Now, the integrated STEAM education framework of our project concludes with recommendations and tips for stakeholders. Specifically, educators are encouraged to make use of technological tools and resources that foster STEAM integration, establish, uh, establish good collaboration with their colleagues, and participate in teacher communities of practice uh, for getting the opportunity to ex ex exchange experiences and um, provide peer support. Head of schools need to foster a supportive and collaborative school environment, shape an enabling environment for STEM integration, and promote long-term uh, school projects. Ministries of Education uh, should provide diversified training on how to introduce, design, and implement STEM integrated teaching. Uh, they need to adapt school textbooks and teacher supportive material to highlight the interdisciplinary links and promote the creation of communities of practice on local and country level. Finally, our industry should inform STEM education um, by identifying the needs in terms of skills. Uh, they also need to collaborate with local authorities and schools and provide equipment and other incentives or invest in finding a new uh, talent. I'm closing my presentation by providing you with uh, the useful links that are related to our project, uh, its website and some documents uh, regarding the main uh, outcomes. And of course, the final integrated uh, STEAM education framework is coming very soon. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nicoletta, also for your interesting presentation. Definitely, it's important that uh, in the project uh, there are really different countries and also European School Net, you know, because the Ministry of Education established European School Net. So it's also important that we have uh, this kind of projects uh, and that really that you prepare this MOOC. And of course, uh, uh, also in ATS STEM project, we talk about this integrated STEM education, you know. And it's important is that there are teachers from different sub, different uh, areas, di different disciplines, not only from STEM, but also from others. Uh, and yeah, important is that we all try to do some kind of, I mean, not, uh, not some kind of, um, very important of the project are frameworks, uh, which uh, we provide. And yeah, thank you also mentioned this. And yes, this implementation, and uh, really those recommendations for all stakeholders are important. So thank you very much, Nicoletta. Uh, I will just share my screen now. Uh, uh, so we will go, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I don't know what's what with my voice today, but I hope everything will be okay. So I'm just sharing the screen. Uh, so the, the next uh, 20 minutes, uh, I will, um, uh, I mean, we will make a group. Uh, I already mentioned that we will have four groups. So the first group uh, will be uh, the group uh, who will talk about uh, things uh, which were presented by, by Mark. Uh, if you remember self-regulated uh, learning, teamwork of teachers, uh, how tasks of uh, pupils are understand, that's why this self-regulated uh, self is important, the rules which were in the project and et cetera. So, uh, the third group will be there. Uh, uh, from the project in the group uh, uh, will be there, I will also come there, but will be also uh, uh, <clears throat> someone from other project, uh, our pro I mean, uh, from ATSM project. Uh, and then the second group will be a group uh, uh, where Gregory will be also there. And then, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Eva, also from our project, will be there. I will ask her to maybe uh, uh, really to the debate will have a focus there. And then the third group, uh, I mean, the focus uh, that you will go on, what we expect, because I think it's really interesting presentation and we have many ideas. And then the second, the third group is Samaye, 
So we also uh, discussed there about this, also maybe simulations, uh, this really uh, approach, STEM approach, uh, learning scenarios, uh, policymakers' guidelines, for example, this pedagogical platform for pupils in STEM, uh, how researchers are involved. And now I will not <laughs> uh, repeat about the Paul Group Nicoletta. So, um, I will just, uh, the, your tasks are here. So each group, we would like just really shortly to get to know each other. You will be group of seven, eight. Uh, maybe if you have some questions for presenters, but maybe, not maybe, I would like to ask you to really uh, others that uh, pre present your experience. And the most important is really that you discuss what are the opportunities for further development and especially this system systemic approach how we can this integrate in the into the system and of course maybe some obstacles but of course the most important are, are opportunities and then i would like to really ask uh, if you can uh, report in padlet so each group if you just put in the padlet uh, uh, those ideas uh, for policymakers, but also for others at all levels, national, regional, and EU level. I will just check if uh, if everyone are in the groups because some people come uh, uh, and in. Uh, so I put also uh, those tasks here uh, in 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 chat, and I will open now the rooms and. Uh, uh, we will, I will close the room at uh, 11.45. So you will have 15 minutes. So we will have then around 10 minutes to, to make a conclusion. Hello, we are back. Hello, Boris. We posted four ideas to the public and completed our discussion. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. I, will, I will close also the room, also at the room, so. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I ha have an urgent task from our uh, director general, so I will sorry to leave a bit earlier, but I will be leading. Uh, I will be listening to the webinar, but I will be also completing a task in the yeah. background. Okay, yeah. no problem. Thank you again for Thank your you. presentation, and we will share your presentation also to our colleagues. I, I mean, sure. to the participants. Yeah. Thank sure. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 So as I understand now from, from group three, you came back. Uh, perfect. And maybe if you have some comments from group, ah, group three you already put in discussion. Thank you, thank you, perfect. Um, yeah, completed all the tasks. Yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> very, very good, thank you. You know, so I can give you now another task. <laughs> you know, it's like in the classroom. <laughs> when the kids uh, finish, then you need to give them. We, we couldn't <laughs> stop talking, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, so welcome back, all of you. Um, you know, I just tried to finish our meeting uh, before uh, noon as, as was uh, uh, planned. So thank you very much uh, for all groups. We will just go now quickly through the through the uh, Padlet. If some, oh, sorry, I will just share my screen. Uh, if some groups will still put some uh, some ideas, uh, I would like to ask you. But also uh, maybe after the after the meeting, I will ask also colleagues colleagues from the project if they, if they can say uh, something so maybe uh, can i just ask uh, the group three uh, if you uh, say something about your su suggestions should i just uh, yeah. go through the points <laughs> yes, okay please. um yeah we had a very interesting discussion um since i'm working at a foundation which which funds um, different school projects in STEM education and, and science. That was kind of the first point we talked about that financial support and funding opportunities for schools can be an interesting option to, to foster STEM education. And 
but we also then talked about how you can develop digitization in schools. So focusing on appropriate pedagogy to, um, yeah, to foster technology as a tool, basically. And I think something that um, we all had in a common mind is that it's very important to build different connections to all stakeholders, so ministry, um, and as, as we are working with, for example, um, uh, as a foundation or with different teachers and so on, so that you can create a community which can actually share uh, initiatives and learn from each other. And as a last point, that was more of a, that's something to discuss later on, I think, is to find a common language also and methodology in STEM education to, to decrease barriers for a lot of teachers, I think. And yeah, this is how we kind of wrapped up our discussion. Yeah, perfect. I think there was more to discuss though. <laughs> Definitely, but yeah, thank you very much. So if we move now to group uh, one, um, someone can... Is it uh, someone from the group or... Someone from the group, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, maybe I can do the talk here. We I put the ideas into the second column here, uh, Poland. So the advice there. Um, for the legislation in different countries, more or less to um, uh, advice to learning management systems and digital educational uh, publishers to allow or even force them to be interoperable. Uh, uh, interoperable. Uh, to make them work together, to, to link them more easy, um, and also to make their content uh, adaptable for, uh, for users. And then the third one was to include the, the self-regulatory uh, skills, not only in a few lessons, but in, 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 uh, in, uh, in more lessons at, uh, in, uh, in the same uh, way. Um, so the stu students will recognize the, the, the items within the self-regulatory uh, skills. So for the learning management uh, systems and the digital educational publishers, maybe we can even go to a sort of rating systems in, in, in which they can, can uh, um, uh, let, let users see that they are very interoperable or and, and, and adaptable and and the way they do it and, and to 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 easy to log on uh, etc etc so that are the, the advices from the group one thank you thank you very much uh, i mean i was in a couple of uh, minutes uh, in each of the group and i saw you have really a uh, very fruitful discussion about that yeah so maybe from the group uh, three uh, if you have any uh, sorry, group three, through group two. Uh, maybe Eva, if uh, you can say some words about your discussion. I I turn off the, the my camera because I'm really okay. no problem. And it's really hard to to summarize our discussion because it was very <laughs> thought provoking, and I tried to moderate the conversation so that people could like join in, but it 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 was very interesting. <laughs> Uh, problematizing about the teacher's role and student role and learning and the future of the school and such and it, 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 uh, it was really really interesting and we would have loved to continue our conversation i think and perhaps we can after this project yeah definitely in other projects yeah collaborate yeah, thank you, Eva. Yes, definitely. I hope uh, because also one of the oh, no. goal of these uh, policymakers meetings is that really brings together the project, but also experts. I hope that, uh, yeah, we will be managed. Uh, I already said next week we have a filing conference of our project, but as Eva mentioned, uh, also new possibilities will be in the new project. So thank you. Uh, and then uh, if, I may, if I may add something, yes. I forgot yeah. uh, that we will have a scientific workshop coming up in May 24 and 31st of May. Yorgos, who is here, will be one of the trainers. It will be announced by scientix but I think there will only be about 15 places. So uh, if you are interested to participate, it's free, of course, you know. So, yeah, just for you to know. Yeah, thank you. So. 
Uh, can you maybe put the link to this or it's... Uh, uh, when it's I received the flyer from the scientists, ah, I can share okay. it. Yes, okay, they okay. Have the flyer now, yeah. I think. Yeah, but it's in the 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 this. Uh, I, I just call it the association. I mean the the, uh, the platform, community the platform, platform. scientific. So we can find it there. Yeah, and then the, the from the group four, uh, if anyone would like to share us. Yeah, I think first of all, Ram, Ram is trying to say something. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I have a question for Gregory. One more question, but just uh, about the lesson plans you, you showed. Uh, they are on the STEAM uh, homepage, right? That's uh, right. Are they available for us? Yes, you can use them free, yes, free to use them. them and give us feedback. In the STEAM hybrid website, by the way, you yeah. can see a modification of the template for hybrid uh, uh, project-based learning activity. Okay, great. We have Thank modified you. that, okay? Yes, great. Thank you. Perfect. So, Nicolas? Yeah, so... I try to be short. So one really interesting opinion was about public opinion and how in order to have uh, systematic changes, it's important for the public opinion to change and see schools differently and see how schools, uh, these kind of projects allow schools and enable students to be more engaged, more interested in what we are teaching. And this way, this would be a force to enable changes in the the systems of the country because in order to make changes these are long-term approaches to make changes in the in curriculum we, we talked about reorganizing the curriculum allowing different disciplinary uh, subjects to work together and find common ground in, in having stem projects and for these kind of changes public opinion is really important that will allow and, and encourage these changes into the system so well, that was really a very interesting approach that was Discussing yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. very interesting. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, how we will do it, you know, because we have also some, you know, for example, in Slovenia, we just started in Slovenia some civil, uh, uh, civil movements when the parents and experts, not only teachers and headmasters, try to do something in public that we really need uh, uh, this transformation of schools to be done, not just to discuss, you know, about all possibilities which we develop through the project. But then it's it's hard to hard to change. Yeah. So thank you, Nicholas. So uh, I will now finish. I would uh, uh, really like to thank you all the participants that you will you are here, uh, and of course all the presenters, uh, especially all four presenters, and of course also Tobias and Emon. I would just say that we will send you the PowerPoint presentation which we got, which we got from the presenters uh, to you by on your email, you will get it. But the recording will not be published, but if anyone would like to uh, get uh, uh, this recording, you just can send email to me or to Petra. Uh, Petra, uh, 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 she is not attended today. Uh, because we have holidays, you know, our schools are in holidays now one week. Uh, but as I said, we will not publish, but if anyone would like to see it, uh, just tell us. And of course, see you then next week. I hope as much as possible in our final conference or in the future project. Bye. So thank you.